Yeah, this is a, a section. It's called Misogi. This is uh, in the uh, essence of Aikido, also John Stevens' translation. And um, Misogi is a big theme. So purification of body and mind. Okay, all right. So calm the spirit, return to the divine, which the Japanese term is called Chinkon Kishin. And for most people, it's like the Japanese is, uh, you know, something you memorize a little bit. You know, mainly, you know, you're taking a Q exam, so you have to memorize Yoko Menuchi Sankyo Omote, you know. And what the heck does that mean? You know, it means Yoko Men Strike. Um, Sankyo is this third change, and then Omote means you're entering. So, you know, that, that, that's the extent of it. Uh, one thing about being in Shingu and being around Hikizuchi Sensei is that, you know, he spoke a lot of um, O Sensei's words. He used a lot of terms. And well, most of the time, you know, other people just, people in Tokyo, people up north, you know, they didn't relate O Sensei's words to the training. And one thing that Osensei talked about quite a bit was Yusogi, which is different than exercise. In other words, you know, it's a movement art. You're training, okay? And yes, you are getting exercise. But if he says something like uh, purification of body and mind, okay, what does that mean? Oh, you can sweat. You're getting stuff out of your system. Uh, you can kind of meditate, which also means, you know, you kind of can get calmer. Uh, but purification of body and mind, as far as I can tell, means you're dealing with what's called I. Okay? And what is the I? I is a level of self that basically exists in this internal dialogue. And we all have our, our, our experiences and we all have our individual personalities, which are tied to more of a self okay but there's this and right now for example uh the, the all-consuming dialogue here is about the coronavirus so uh in some sense that's good because uh, everybody is you know at least unified around that okay you go out you put a mask on, okay? You wash your hands. So in some sense, behavior is shifted radically because of this insertion into the I stream of consciousness, the interior dialogue. But that is what he kind of called, I mean, there's a certain area of words, just that's what it is. And we're capable of different levels, okay? And what happens is different levels, the dialogue shifts until there's kind of a, more of a, a calm, some people essentially refer to it as emptiness or purity, which means we're going from I to self, and self maybe towards a true self or soul and spirit. And so, you know, the training, for example, is, so, is a misogyny. So yes, you're good. ideally you move, yes, you get exercise, yes, you learn to focus your attention so the mind calms down and is able to concentrate. Uh, but it again is I, this, this whatever this is, you know, to deeper, finer, finer, deeper levels going towards the self. Um, Okay, calm, cleanse the body and spirit by removing all malice, selfishness, and desire. Okay, and one of the things about, you know, the I is that it's selfish. Selfishly, we probably want our whole life back. Right now, there's been a drastic shift. Okay. But on the other hand, you know, if, if that is the overriding thing, then, then, you know, some of the reasons 
that we are socially distancing and and sheltering, uh, home sheltering, whatever it is, is, is to prevent the spread of this virus. And uh, so that area right there, malice, selfishness, desire. And we're in this narrow bandwidth, uh, whether we like to admit it or not. The I is selfish, <laughs> all right, which puts it in this, you know, I want things, but for self-interest, mm -hmm. okay. So as there's a deepening and it gets finer, it's finer, deeper, deeper, finer, it runs both ways. The I starts to shift more towards a self. Um, be ever grateful for the gift received from the universe, Mother Nature, your family, your fellow human beings, which is called kansha. It's called gratitude. And uh, I think it was a couple of years ago, uh, the Santa Cruz retreat. That was the uh, that was the topic, kansha, gratitude. And we had a meeting. Um, I think it was the just before the, the first class started in the evening. And uh, so the question, that's a really interesting, it's a beautiful term, kansha, gratitude. So the point was, what, what does that mean? Because yeah, be grateful. But what I kind of brought up, and, and actually it was well received by the group, okay, was that that's a way of tracking I to self. Okay, so if we just take that one, uh, term, kansha, the Japanese kansha suitor, is be grateful, okay? This interior dialogue, the eye is in a very contracted, very selfish place. As I kind of settle a little bit, which means that, you know, there, there's a finer, the deeper, and some people go the other way, deeper, the finer. Ideally, you want both. Then what happens is, is, is that yeah, there, there's actual gratitude as the eye shifts more towards itself. Um, coronavirus. Yeah. I get more time. I'm usually on my way to teaching a class or between classes resting or whatever it is. And there's a lot of time and space. And then the eye wants to get back into this busyness because it has a routine. Even though to some degree, maybe in itself just. And as the eye starts to kind of move towards the self, all right, you get a negative. I can't see my granddaughter. Okay, good. But she's safer with the isolation, and we still. Uh, see each other, I pick food up and bring food there. And so there's an area where safety, I'm grateful for the fact that she's safer. That's not the surface eye. Okay. There starts to be a bit more, uh, this one doesn't feel in other words, the attitude, I should be more grateful. But the gratitude comes more from maybe the heart. Okay? And we're kind of, in some sense, heart, we're kind of going through the chakras a little bit because they're dimensions. Ah, you sort of get, for example, the, the the solar plexus, that's a personal power. Um, activity, but there's another activity here. Maybe you're able to read more or things like that. Then the holiday, Sensei and I were, were kind of talking the other day. And one of the things is that, you know, we're so busy teaching classes. A lot of times, you know, your own training is neglected. You know, 
the question is, how do you train if there's no class? Well, uh, that's, as you go deeper into the Aikido, you, you kind of take responsibility. For example, training uh, can be just simply tracking that motion of I to self and kansha or gratitude is a, is a big one. Kansha Sutta, to be grateful. So all of a sudden, you know, you can be grateful for the fact that maybe you have more time. Okay? I have to work at home. Good. <laughs> See, we get so, we're, we're a slave to this. And so that as we go more towards the self, and you know, you can use various things, you know. The ritual be so key, um, which is useful. Uh, because, you know, um, then we associate with the activity in the dojo, but there's no reason why you can't wake up in the morning and do, if you want to do ritual misogi, uh, you can. And, you know, as you go finer to deeper, deeper to finer, ah, gets more into kind of like the, the second and the, the first chakras. And so one thing we were mentioning with the seven chakras are like dimensions. And uh, today, uh, for some reason, I can't find my Zuni or the amp. Uh, I'll find it sometime. I'll bump into it. Okay. Uh, but, uh, boom. So most anything can be practiced in Kansha. You know, when I'm up here, I'm, I'm, I'm everything's a, I'm too busy and, you know, when that starts. Ah, start to feel a, a calmness. Um, see, when, when that, moving towards the self, there's a feeling, uh, see here, empty is scary. But emptiness is another thing. Emptiness is more open. <sighs> emptiness is freedom. And that can stretch all the way up, back down to the roots, or from the roots, it can ascend. And it's really movement of consciousness. So con as the eye gets this gets easier, freer. Okay? One of the things that uh, you know if you Read Bruce Lee. He didn't talk about increasing power. He talked about liberation. I think in Hindu it's called moksha. See, if you're wedded to power, then, you know, part of this, right? I mean, if you look at uh, people in power, especially in organizations and governments, they're wedded to it. They want it. And then the malice and the greed come in there, and self-interest, and they're supposed to serve the, you know. And uh, we're getting a, a massive lesson now, observing what's going on in the world around the coronavirus. Okay, so uh, I thought what we do, let me do this. We're going to switch rooms. I'm going to take my clock. And uh, yeah, let me carry a couple things. So I get, <clears throat> I need to kind of drink something where my throat dries out and I start to cough. And we've been working a lot of the movements with the speeder. What I've been mentioning is you can take something of any length. Well, since they apparently had a kind of pointer stick, and he could use it, you know, be a staff, or he could also be a spear. And it could be, you could rep for a cutting motion of a sword. So, you know, part of 
movements like this. But it's not what we do. Let's just start out. A little slower. Okay. So um thought we do this. Is uh, we did some stretching. So we're just gonna start with some stretching. Uh what I kind of do, stretching also is a way of in breath, out breath. I'd like you to do this a little bit, just uh, volume. See, I can just wave the hands. But. Coming in. Going out. I'm breathing through the nose. I'm keeping the mouth. Closed, but. Jaw not clenched, so I'm breathing basically through the nose. In and out. Okay. And as we're doing that, we're moving, but The fascia and the body start to realign. Again, that's the connective tissue. Okay. Those are movements, I think, if you're to track breath, that are fairly common. Aikido wise, you know, there are movements that are based on that. Somebody comes to grab the wrist over here. Okay. Go Q Ho. Say it's a breath technique. The eye takes it up here, gets the information, gets a little better, but you may begin to see and it's important to kind of get a sense. I use the word see, but uh, see energy, not just the obvious I'm going on I'm doing form. So here to take this motion and that motion. It's like your in breath, fire, out breath, water. And after a bit, there's breath. In other words, these things just start to naturally circuit. Then you get to a body feel place, and those uh, movements are naturally going on. You can't be thinking about this and this and doing an Aikido move. Whatever the movement is. There's a this and a that. Okay, but given that, yeah. Okay.
and from where you are, be very easy. That's one cycle of in and out. I take it a little deeper. Another cycle of in and out. I do that on the other side. Okay. Then. In, out, another cycle, in, out, another cycle, in, and out. So I use a three pattern. Out, in, out, and out. And be careful with this one, but in, out, in, out, in, out. I don't try to get to extreme a stretch in my first round. Okay. And what I'm doing here is extending the right leg. This is a hamstring stretch. Breathe in. Out. The other cycle. In. Out. In. Out. I'll go to the other side, which for me is a left in. Out. Lengthening. In. Out. In out, okay. okay. Now I like this stretch too. Okay. In out. In out. In out. Okay. Actually, now I go the other way. My daughter likes to stretch. She teaches Pilates. In out. In. Out, in, out. Okay. Extend the other leg. In, out, in, out, in, and out. In, out, in, out, in, out. Actually stretching towards the folded leg uh, stretches the you know, the, uh, the flexor muscles in the hips. And the hips can't move freely, but the system can't move freely if the hips are too locked up. Okay? And feet together. In, out, another cycle. In, out, in, and out. Okay? So that's a complete one thing. I actually go through this uh, three times on the ground. Let's go through it once more. Okay? So I don't try to get to an extreme place. I just allow the breathing, the body to open along the breathing. So we go back to this. In, out, now another level. In, out, in, and out. Good. Then go the other way. In, out, in, out, in, out. Good. Now, careful here, but in, out, in, out, in, out. Okay. Now, on that second set, they had goes more towards the ground. If I did a third set, which I'm not going to do, uh, I, I work on getting the chest and the belly this way. Okay. Okay. But I go back, hook the hamstrings in, out, in, out, in, out, in the other side, in, out, in, out, in, out. Good. Repeat. In. Out. In. Out. In. And out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Once more. Okay. And we go back here. In. In. Out. In, 
In and out. In. In and out. Good. Okay. And now, kind of standing up. What do I notice about the body? <sighs> Much more in the body because you know stretching kind of wakes the body up. See, this pushes us out. You know, I'm gonna try to stretch. I'm gonna try to overstretch, but in increments. Since they said Genkai, material, Yukai, energy movement, more the hidden world, Shinkai, what he called the more divine world, the realm of Kami, whatever. So he used a one, two, three pattern in his larger process. And we're not quite doing that, but he liked the one, two, three instead of and he said to, according to Mary Heine Sensei once, you do something more than three times since you're, you're exercising. And, you know, exercise is different than what he called gyo. Gyo is kind of like a moving, you're, you're working out, but it's, it's different than, than taiso, which is exercise, okay? So, um, me. Real quick check. Okay, so we got a couple of people here. That's good. And the other thing we did the last class that I thought was good. Now, there's nobody here, you know, that's new. So um, when you're doing this, it's like, okay, let's everybody do this. You know, when you're working with somebody new, you, you know, they have to learn this. We're going to just do. And again, I have a really good surface here. Carpet front, so we're going to. If you have that surface, uh, try a couple of. Back rolls. Okay. Just to uh, loosen the body up. See, when, when the eye is too tight, the body moves, but it's sitting there. The eye kind of goes more towards the self, it opens, and the body gets looser, freer. <sighs> okay, so anything, you know, like in, you know, a tight eye. Huh? Eye starts to let go. <sighs> Things open up. Okay, so if you've got a, a little room, take a couple, begin to feel the body. If you did the stretching with me, then chances are that's a, that'll, that, that, that's a good way of taking that stretching into movement. Okay? And I'm just sitting here, but trying to sit here with a bit more body feel presence as opposed to what am I going to do next? That's an interior dialogue, and that creates an eye that's kind of, what am I going to do here? Just be easy. Be relaxed. Be open. And now, Remember on that one, the arm and stuff. Got it. Yeah. For whatever reason, my arm on that side wasn't as good. But the system will correct. I, 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 it just tends to get very self critical. Okay. And just. Huh? And if you can do that, this is the next stage in Nasa Sensei. Top heavy, but same from, from, from kind of from the hips. I'm going that, that direction. 
palm up, that direction, palm up. But as I'm going that direction, see the other hand turns over. So boom, boom. So you have your basic Haino Henko, and you also have your hand blade as you're doing this. Yanasa Sensei would uh, do this in the morning 500 times. And then he would take the bokeh, tuck his toes, and do 500 bokeh cuts. <laughs> okay, and last, you know, and I saw him in, I think it was, yeah, I think it was 2001, when the holiday sensei, and I went to visit Ano sensei, so we also, obviously, we went into Yanasa sensei, and I said, are you still doing 500? He said, now I'm doing 1,000, because he had sort of stopped going to the dojo, so he was, doing his own training. So, go to Yaku, 500, well, Senkai, 1,000 times. Okay, so, all right. So that, that's a case of somebody who's training, but it's more of a Gyo, as opposed to a Taiso, okay? Um, Koichi Tohei Sensei, he kind of, that was called, you know, the Aiki Taiso. You know. And Hiki Suchi Sensei hated the term Aiki Taiso. Taiso. Mm -hmm. for, for Hiki Suchi Sensei, everything was Gyo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we took this in, you know, if you feel like it, get up and um, on this motion, say there's a tendency to swing the arms, which is okay. You can just sort of do this as a loosening of the shoulders. It's exercise, but this is and back. I go in, out with the hands. I open the fingers. One, two, three. And four. Last time I saw you announced it since I think it was 2014. And he gave us an hour class on this. And he said, you should have your students do an hour of this. Okay. Yeah, and I've never done that. <laughs> because if it's exercise, you're, the eye goes, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's repetitive, but whoa. Oh, oh, oh. And yes, you are getting exercise. Now, we can also vary the pace of it. And um, Ano Sensei was doing boom, 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 which is a totally different one than when I was training years ago. But you know, you have a, you really have four. You have one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Or Hikizuchi Sensei used to say, you're reaching out, you grab the earth, pull the earth to your center, and you push the earth away. Okay? 
uh, but you have a, you know, outwardly you have a one and a two. And when I saw auto sensei do this, boom, this, boom, 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 boom. The two, the obvious two become one, 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 one. And then one, one, one. So unifying kind of fire and water, boom, unification. The unification is the uh, seventh chakra, boom, boom, see? Two become one. Two become one. And so the exercise, you can exercise, but Gyo is different. Okay? Gyo is very different. And it's very difficult, for example, to do the, um, somebody says work out on your own. It's harder. Well, it's harder to do. There's motivation when you go to a class, you're with other people doing the same thing. That's, that's the strength of the dojo. But right now, uh, we have a virtual dojo. Okay? And when you're by yourself, you probably have a lot more free time than you like. Uh, you, the feel of gyo is different than the feel of taiso. Taiso meaning exercise, and gyo meaning kind of something for your own inner development. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, Second the time. Right hand, left hand. Now, you know, if you do this, I go, okay, that's good. In in Shingo, we used to chant a mantra, a mantra me coming, a mantra me coming. Because you can just stand here and kind of go, you kind of drift off. And if you're focusing mentally on a vibration or a coming in, it's a mantra. The sun goddess. Collection of kami around purification. Uh, the original point out of which the Big Bang happened. And if that's not your thing, say there's me doing the exercise, it's going to burn out. But as I goes to more self, self becomes a bit more aware. So I'm starting to use this. I begin to feel the body. It's like an engine warming up. Okay. And I try to get to that point where the vibration is moving through me. See, this motion and this motion expand out, but they also go the other way. They get finer. So, so I just go this way, I, I kind of start to Kind of space out. And if I just do this, I burn out. But so hit that place. I don't know if I just sort of go this way. 
body continues to feel not just itself, but that vibration going through you. You know, the one is an agi, the other one is an ami. And together they form that vibration. One can be mind, the other body. They kind of have a shared resonance pattern, um, a harmony. Opposites kind of being teammates as opposed to opponents. Your own system has a, there's an eye key with your own system, which then we check with a partner or tech, through a technique or motion. So those are just a couple of things you can do uh, if you're interested in kind of training yourself. Um, let's see, uh, we're gonna move on, but uh, let me see anybody with a question. I think we got it. David, do you have a question on any of this stuff? Hello? Yeah. Takes a second to unmute. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, that's true. Well, okay. Um, I don't understand what you mean when you say dimensions. Uh, yeah, that's because most of the time what it is is that we're kind of in kind of the, the I internal dialogue. So one of the things about Aikido is that, you know, part of the misogi is stepping out of that first level, okay, into other levels, okay? And so, for example, level one, uh, I'm worried about dojo finances. So I got a call yesterday from Laura here, and he was talking about you know, what's going on with Aikido in Mountain View and San Francisco, and how are we doing? So all of a sudden, this dialogue starts. You know, you, you have to pay attention to it, but kind of settle a little deeper. Uh, you have to realize there are responsibilities here. But when you're kind of this way, you tie yourself up. So as you're easier, um, you see things clearer if you step out of this. In other words, this, this oftentimes is not just a level one, it's a negative level. So if you just get to a basic, okay, here I am, right here, right now, this is the world, and this is me, that's an accomplishment. But in dimensionality, what you do is you say, that's your basic, okay? And then you get a balance in it, and then all of a sudden there's another level, there's that next level of you. Now this one's starting to feel, not just the body a little bit. The first one, just getting out of all this noise into a fuller body feel. It's about level one, it's a balance level. But let's say there's a level two. See, the floor itself has more depth. All right, like, like uh, my weight is settling underneath. So people come up with things like root here. Uh, instead of I'm tracking my breathing, the breathing is something that begins to, not, not as much as some of the later ones, the breathing is starting to happen through, that's a level two. Um, level two starts to notice things without being either overwhelmed by everything out there or being kind of in a state of uh, detachment from it, okay? I go level three. Ah, level three. I have an environment, okay, this is house, but uh, there's also an energy field here. And I'm a part of that energy field. In other words, field kind of has its own motion of breath, and my own body has a type of motion or breath to it. And uh, there's a sense of, uh, 
as you kind of, you know, you're at least acknowledging there's something outside me energetically. And then uh, level four, the two start to sync up. My hands go this way, but that field can also move. Okay, like in Star Trek, here I am with my tri tricorder and my phaser. Okay, but I'm in constant contact with the mother ship. Beam me up. Mm -hmm. Okay, transport me there. Boom, boom. And that mother ship is more like the energy field. Shields up. <laughs> work drive. You see that there's certain things I can't do. I can't work drive. But when that mother ship and I are connected, I can do a lot of things. You see? So it, for, for Oishi, but with Sensei, the mothership wasn't the enterprise, it was the universe. And he sort of was somebody that kind of vibed in a way the universe that he kind of had a, a communicator. And, you know, so, you know, beam me up, he disappeared. <laughs> Let me know when bullets are coming. Oh, you see, that's my kind of my pop culture take on him. Okay, so David, does that under, is that answering your questions? Yes, I think it does. Okay, yeah. So one of the tricky things is just going from, you know, dimension one to dimension two, because uh, what happens is a lot of people just stay in dimension one and they work it and they get better. But everybody's body is going to eventually decay. But I think what happened with those sensei was okay, you know, because you know, when he's younger, he had a great body, you know, but as he got older, um, the body also starts to dimensionally be present. So he was in a much more advanced dimension of body. And then that would compensate for whatever aging took away from his physical body. Okay? People said even when he was 80, whatever it was, he was physically really strong. Okay? And so it wasn't, you know, he wasn't going out there and, and, and moving boulders and cutting trees down like when he was younger. And he understood how to go from an 80 year old body to a much more dimensionally present body. Okay? And a finer. Okay? So uh, that sort of stuff is, uh, is important. Now, for example, if we want to start moving, we, we don't have the chakra music today, okay? But if you have something, why don't you get it? Okay? All right. One of the hardest things is just getting a, uh, let, let, let me, because I got to keep my cell phones. I was checking other people present, okay? See, level one, This, this is like graffiti. You're looking for something. And there's all this activity of the eye up here. Okay? So, you know, you... And the learning tends to be out there. So just starting to relax a bit. You might call this beginnings of body feel. It's level one. All right, level one has to learn basic things. Like for example, we have I have a triangle. Uh, I'm not too loose or too tight. Thumbs face away. That's our first change. Second change. Thumbs face each other. Third change, thumbs face me. Fourth change, beginnings are more root and ground, not put your weight out there. And fifth change, which leads to a lot of the figure eight. And then, you know, here for thumb down, thumb up, thumb down, thumb up, figure eight, thumb up, thumb down, thumb up, thumb down. That's how you do it that way. But you know, those are just basic ingredients. All right, and you know, initially, you know, the more activity here, the more we, we kind of get in our own way, but you know, okay, one, two, three, 
Four, you're sorting the information out better with some body presence. Five, boom, 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 boom. Okay, so uh, no big deal, except it is a big deal. Uh, level two, level two. Uh, it's starting to be a bit more something in the body. Okay, boom, boom. You know, and your eye is getting out of the way, so your mind and its sense of the movements start to orchestrate. Oh. Okay, uh, you know, and, and you know, this is not to be trifled with. It's very important because it's less that I, in level one, is trying to do the movements. And we're starting to say, yeah, you have to learn the movements. Now you're starting to sort them out, and the I is a little easier with itself. A little bit more basic body presence. Okay, good, good. Now level three. Level three, boom, starts to boom, integrate those things a little easier, a little freer. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, okay. Uh, level four is where things start to pick up. Boom, 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 boom. This is more like the second chakra. Boom, boom, boom. Right, right. So that's uh, each of them, and we're talking about really the movements, but you're using the movements to track the movement from getting to a balanced level one with yourself to a two, to a three, to a four. For those of you that tuned into the, uh, the chakra drum, you know, level five is kind of where you start to boom, get into the boom, 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 boom. This is like you know, the third chakra, boom, things start to cook here. Boom, 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 Level five, heart. So this one, boom, boom, is a little deeper, even though it's still as active. Boom, 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 boom. Starting to feel. So boom, instead of all that raw energy here, boom, 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 boom. Level six, throw. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, the heart's there, there's more feeling, but also you're starting to really communicate. Boom, boom, throw. Boom, 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 boom. The movements, huh? Six, third eye. The point we made with the third eye was all of a sudden, boom. And that little point is a whole universe. Boom, 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 boom. We started root, seventh chakra. It's unification, why? Because we, we go to here and all of a sudden everything starts to integrate. Root, likewise here, back down to root. So your system is full and So since they like this, but he also like this. So he was going both directions. And you know, if you're stuck, that's part of development. A lot of people are stuck first to second chakra. All right, all they really want to do 
is survive and procreate. <laughs> okay, that's about it. And then you get some people, uh, you know, politicians, you know, they, they want power. Okay. And then you get people, you know, that, that the real leaders start to kind of they have some heart. You spot these people here, they pretend to care, but you know all they, they really care about is themselves. Okay, heart. Now, the real, real leaders, they, 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 they can communicate that. Then, still fewer, you start to go up here, they have vision. can integrate and still fewer it's all in a live experience so I would probably say what Shiva Sensei he he was like seven deep in terms of you know the chakra system and each the level of I to self Self becomes clear, I starts to let go. So right about here, there's a, a real, my sense, a real clarity. Things like peace, calm, they start to kind of become not just ideas, but, but they're present, not, not body feel as body feel, but <sighs> All right? Things like love. Well, since we talk about love a lot, uh, but love is totally tied to the, to the root chakra and the procreation chakra, your kitchen trouble. Okay? All right? So most of this culture is run by leaders from just about to here. Get somebody here, person that I actually, you know, I mean, I think it's very undervalued. Somebody asked me once, what was the last president that you felt had any integrity? And I said, oh, Jimmy Carter. <laughs> yeah, this. The ones after that, we've been in a real slump. Okay. And it's so easy to get seduced by the root, the procreative and the personal power. And the world is run right now by the lower three chakras. So we need to kind of get people. See, well, since he was doing this, but then it was going deeper, 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 deeper. <sighs> kind of a unity with itself. Then it go the other way. The physical situation at the dojo, he could then you take this and you rotate it, boom, boom, you get the changes. Go ahead. Boom, 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 boom. See, the those sensei, you know, I, I'm kind of a, in some sense, a bad example. Because uh, the those sensei doesn't like this stuff. Because he says you're too fast. But it's always been a superpower. I mean, you know, I can't fly or anything. But he can switch his sense and do a change. And I go, oh, okay, I can do it. The person that was toughest for me was Tojima Sensei that just did this basic motion. Boom. And I was trying to add to it and try to do it. Boom. Body feel, body feel, body feel, body feel, body feel. I also spent a lot of time with Yanasa Sensei. Boom. 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 You know, and, um, feeling his motion. Okay. But I have a, an ability to start kind of very advanced. Boom, 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 boom. So sometimes I'm hard to follow, okay, because of that. But um, apparently, oh, since it was not somebody that took you here, he started pretty boom. I mean, on a much deeper level than I'm able to do. It's a talent I've always had, you know. 
um, or watch Stephen Curry do something, you know, and I go to the gym, how do you do that? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. How did you do that motion? How do you, how do, you do that? Mm. And I would say, oh, okay. Because what I'm trying to do is not copy the movements, but there's a place where the, the grades are. Okay? Um, so I studied his motion, uh, Sadaharu O. Boom. 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 Okay. So those are things that, you know, those are athletes basically, but they're touching a very original place. Okay. So um, anybody with a question or I'll kind of open it up here or Oops, God, we went uh, pretty, pretty late. A uh, cliff. Any, any questions or anything there? Um, just on the relationship between the chakras and what Nado Sensei was saying about one by one, two by two, three by three. You seem to be ma making a mapping there. Yeah. Well, his. Uh, okay. Uh, what happens is that for most people, they can't do a one by one because we're in the dialogue at that noise level, the internal dialogue of the eye. So just think a little one by one, one by one. Okay? You know how to hold the stick, you know the changes to some degree, you know that. You can do this a little bit. And you're not driving yourself crazy out there or out of control. One by one. Okay? So that just gets you to a balanced level one as opposed to a minus level. Okay, now. One, two. One, two. More space. More options. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, so for here, boom. You start to be able to process and integrate the movements. Boom. Oh, that's a level three. That's a level two. Oh, wow, now it's about to a three. Figure eight, oh, nice. Now, he likes it three by three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. As you go one by one, two by two, to three by three, the eye goes more towards a self. Like three, it's not just a little better and freer with the material. Three is beginnings. of commanding the material. Beginnings of. So um, it would be a little bit like our one, two, three. Okay. Now, the beginnings of command, level four, boom, boom, is kin for us. It's a little bit like, you know, we, boom, 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 boom. That third chakra. So just getting the root balanced, or whatever, that level one is a lot. Yeah. I'm sure Clark Kent has to pay his income tax. He has to make sure that, that he doesn't walk out with his shirt top open. Right, he has to test deal with stuff. Okay, it's level one. Boom, 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 boom. And it's necessary. Boom. But we have the ability to go from a one by one to a two by two. 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 Two by two.
to part two. So not just sort of knowing the material, but you know, okay, just starting to integrate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Level three, You're trying to get somewhat of a, the beginnings of command. In, in IT, they're all level, you know, basically, you know, you're not a shogun, but you're a brown belt. Okay? Now, what happens to brown belt is everybody gets, so, you know, but the, the, the real shift from, you know, EQ to shogun is, you know, where the material, instead of the material commanding you, you're beginning, not after, but beginning to command the material. Okay, and there are other levels. So um, that would be my read. He doesn't like my map because he says uh, I confuse people, which I think I do. But you know, boom, 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 boom. I've always liked that. So I go, oh, how's that done? Okay, boom, boom, boom. And so I have to kind of up my game. I, I, I tend to like that. I like that. One by one, two by two, three by three. That's a pretty good presentation. But you see my map with it using this motion. Is that a little clear, Cliff? Cliff? Yes, so it's fine. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else with a question? Uh, yeah, we didn't have the music today, so uh, we'll try to get that back. I hope uh, it, you know it rematerializes in my world. Um, uh, one of the things I kind of want to mention is um, I'm, I've done about the first three of an online Tai Chi course, which uh, I, I want to make available, okay? Uh, so the first three are on YouTube, uh, and what I'm looking for is the website to be updated so I can add the last three, it's about six, six lessons. And then maybe at some basis, we, we can make one of these a Tai Chi. I think Governor Newsom was talking about activities, you know, that, that can open up, you know, um, as we responsibly. I think California is going to be a bit more responsible than some of what's going on in the nation. I hope. But he does said Tai Chi as a an activity. Why? Because you can social distance. And it's something we can begin to do on Zoom. And uh, Dojo reopens at some point. Uh, we want to maybe spotlight the Tai Chi a bit more because uh, they're brother sister. Okay, I actually got my teaching certificate in Tai Chi April of 1973, then I got my first degree black belt in Japan in December of that year. So I was actually, when I went to Japan, see it was one of the things, you know, uh, Frank Duran, you know, came up to me and says, Jack, I, I wish we could send you to Japan as a showdown. Politics. <laughs> so I said, that's cool. But I had the teacher certificate in Tai Chi before I went. So that was kind of my own inner sense that I had a black belt. You know, it was given to me by Master Choi, who was a master, okay? And um, I remember I got back in, I guess it was, yeah, it was, it was December, late, 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 and I had a saber that I had a friend uh, who was passing through China to get to Japan, but I think it was Hong Kong, okay? And so I gave it to Master Choi. And I, you know, I was some, uh, like, uh, what, 25, and, you know, you, you, you know your training in Japan was really quick. And so um, what happened is, um, Master Trey called me up and two other people, and he was standing, you know, facing that direction, I facing this direction, and he was demonstrating a Tai Chi move, right? And I walk in there. And he kind of says, he points to me and says, he knows how to use it. Self-defense, because I wrote him a letter, because there was a guy in the, uh, 
not not the dojo. He was a big, 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 overly big guy who was in the accounting class club that Sikizuchi Sensei taught, and he was a bully. And uh, so what happened is, you know, he did a couple of other arts, and so um, during the course of training, you know, all of a sudden he he, he puts a chokehold on me. And I remember Master Choi, the pulse monkey, he said, that's something most don't think about. I give him a good shot. I never heard of it. And so I wrote Master Choi, he said, hey, you know, in class, some weird guy tried to put me out with a choke, and I remembered your hidden application. <laughs> pulse the monkey. And he was just ecstatic. Because everybody at that time was kind of into kind of this more drifty, sense of Tai Chi, right? And he would, you know, so he gets me up. I'm standing right there. And he has two other people. It's kind of a multiple situation. And so what he does do is, you know, he goes one, two, and I'm in the middle, three. Okay? And that's a movement called step up, parry, and punch. Okay, and um, what he does do is that motion. And you know, I'm just back from Japan and I'm quick, right? And so I know he takes that guy and that guy and he's gonna take me, so I go like this, which is a, this is called play the fiddle, right, to cover it. And so I go back and I think it was Mary Heine, Sensei, and I think a couple other people from Santa Cruz, we all drove up together and I asked uh, Master Troy because he limited, you know, the, a lot of the, the observation of, you know, just, just the Tai Chi people. I said, well, just friend, can she watch? And she looked at him and she said, you know, he's like your know, sensei of striking arts. But so I said, you know, I kind of knew that he was going to do that. So I'm glad I was able to get my hands up. You know, because I was real quick in those days. And you know what everybody said? He said, Jack, by the time you got your hands up, he was like that. In other words, you know, I knew it was coming, and I saw it coming, and I went like this, but he went, boom. Boom. And uh, Master Troy was a master. And Mary Heine Sensei looked at me and says, you know, he has what those sensei had, katsu hayabi, katsu hayabi. The speed that is past time space. And yeah, so uh, anyway, I'd, I'd like to, uh, we've got to get the website uh, updated to include the courses and refer people to the website. I'm still waiting on that, and so hopefully not much longer. Anyway, so um, I'm gonna bow out for today. I hope you enjoyed. We didn't get the music. I'll try to have it back for next class, but thank you all. Uh, David, I'm going to leave the meeting. Okay. Thank you, Sensei. Thank you. Okay, take thank care. You, okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, David. Bye-bye.